My name is Michael Avery from Kent's Design Systems and in this video we talk about the system Verilog assertions sequence within construct. We talk about the basic syntax, an example of its use within properties and the dangers associated with it if you don't properly understand the definition. So as you may guess from its name, what the sequence within construct defines is a construct which is deemed to have passed if one sequence is contained fully within another. So for example, sequence A is contained within sequence B. Here's an example of sequences. We've got sequence SAB, which is A followed by B. That's always a fixed number of cycles long, two cycles. This sequence DEFG is DEFG, one cycle apart, so that's four cycles long. How we use this inside of a property is like this. J is the enabling condition here, so when J occurs on cycle one, we have a requirement for the right-hand side to occur. And the right-hand side requires that from the next cycle I get this sequence SDEFG start and then continue to completion, and also the sequence SAB is contained within that. So here's one example of it passing. J occurring, then we have DEFG, so we know at cycle 5 the property has a chance of passing as long as we observe the sequence A followed by B. Here on cycle 3 to 4 we have the sequence A followed by B, therefore we deem to have passed on cycle 5. Now this sequence A followed by B could start anywhere, so our sequence SAB here could have started at cycle 2 or cycle 3 as shown in this example or cycle 4. Any of those would be a pass of the property S13. So let's look at an example. Here's our code. So this is the source browser. Essentially it's what the code was on the slide. Our sequence is SAB, SDEFG, and we're saying SAB is contained within SDEFG, and we're asserting that property, and that's the name of the instance. So if we were to plot this on a waveform with some stimulus, we can see here we've got J occurring. So the sequence DEFG must occur from the following cycle, and the sequence AB contained within it. Here's a sequence SAB starting at the same cycle as DEFG here. And notice the same thing's repeated here, so we have J followed by DEFG for all the three different kinds of passes we can obtain for that property. So that's with AB starting at the same cycle as DEFG, one cycle after it started, and two cycles it's after it started. So notice here on this cycle, for example, the sequence SAB ends on the same cycle as DEFG. That's perfectly okay. Here's example failures. Here we observe J occurring, but the sequence DEFG does not complete. So although we've had the sequence AB, this sequence DEFG did not complete. So we know at this cycle, because G is not present, the property fails. This property here is shown J occurring, and we've got A followed by B, but the sequence is obstructing DEFG, and that's not seen. So we do not observe D on that cycle, which is why that's a fail. So we know already at that cycle that we failed. Another example here, we have J and we have the sequence DEFG from the following cycle, but we only have A, we don't have the sequence A followed by B. The example we've just seen was fairly simple to understand because the sequences were a fixed length. Now you have to be particularly careful using within if you have a variable length sequence or indeed a sequence which could be of an infinite length. So here's a requirement. If I observe the rise of starts, then I must observe between 1 and 3 acts within a 10 cycle window. The 10 cycle window begins in the same cycle as when I observe the rise of start, and the acts need to be consecutive cycles, but can occur any time within that 10 cycle window. So this looks like a very sensible property to write if we do this. So we're detecting the rows of start here, and it says here from the same cycle we've got a 10 cycle window. So our 10 cycle window is 1 tick B1, i.e. true, repeated for 10 consecutive cycles, and within it we expect to see act occur between 1 and 3 times. So given what we've just seen on the within property, this seems a very sensible thing to write, but it will not do what you think it will do. So if in Jasper Gold, which is a formal verification tool, I say to the tool, show me an example of this property passing, I might see a waveform like this and wonder why, you know, is this a bug with the tool? This does not look like what I asked for, because I'm seeing, I'm sampling on rising edges here, so I'm sampling at cycle 4 and 5, two consecutive acts, and I'm sampling at 8 and 9, two consecutive acts. So I've seen a total of four acts there, which wasn't really my intention. I wanted to see between one and three of them, so how come this does not work? Now, in the LRM, so let's take a look at the LRM. So the section on assertions, so this is the IEEE standard 1800, which defines the system Verilog language. Chapter 16 is assertions. This is the 2017 version. If we look at sequence operations and sequences contained within another sequence, this goes on to describe what, how within works. And the first thing it does, and it's really essential you remember this whenever using within. In fact, personally, I don't like using within for this reason. So I, I would describe this in another way with sequences. 
if we say sequence one within sequence two, this is shorthand for writing this. So one, this one means true always. So true for zero to an infinite number of cycles, hash hash one, sequence one, then one cycle later, true for zero to an infinite number of cycles. That's what it means. Remember that when we go back to this slide. So that property that we wrote, which we thought as a solution to our problem, is actually the same as this. Okay. So now you might get an inkling of what's gone wrong here. So a single lack, because we've set a range from 1 to 3, is anywhere within that 10 cycle window satisfies all requirements, because I've said 0 to an infinite number of cycles it can appear on either end of this sequence, which is satisfied. So this subsequence ACK star 1 to 3 is satisfied by a single occurrence of ACK. So that's the reason we see the behavior we do. So it's very easy to make mistakes when using operators like intersect and within and throughout. And for such problems, what's often easier and less error prone and, and easier for formal tools to process is if you use auxiliary code, which is just helper code there to make it easier to write properties. So this auxiliary code looks like system relog RTL, and it has to be for the tool, but it's there just for verification. So let's see an example of how we how we'd approach such a thing. So this first thing I'll say about this is this is not a solution to the previous problem we've seen. This is just an example of using auxiliary code to do similar kinds of properties, which essentially many things require that you count a number of occurrences in a given window. So this is a general solution to these kinds of things. So if your requirement was I shouldn't have three occurrences of B in any 10 cycle window, we could do it like this. One, that's true always, repeated 10 consecutive cycles intersected with B occurring four times non-consecutively. So that's not necessarily consecutively. And I'm, I'm saying not here, so, so that's I'm saying I should have no more than three. That was a requirement. So I should not observe four occurrences within any 10 cycle window. And for reasons we won't discuss here, I have to say strong for this thing to work. So you can look at that and say, well, actually, that's not very intuitive. There's lots of things I have to understand in order to do what really looks like a simple check. So how can I approach this in a different way? It's also not easy for the tool to evaluate because you have a moving 10 cycle window that has to be evaluated always. So what we can do is just remodel this with auxiliary code. So this is an HDL model. For verification only, it's not a copy of the design. It's just there to abstract the problem of trying to prove the property. We've got a shift register with 10 elements because we've got a 10-cycle window. We shift B in from the right-hand side, and we clock it down every clock until it falls out at the end. And all we need to say, then, is assert the property that count ones is a built-in system relog function, which will count how many ones are in the shift register. So I'm just saying that should never equal four. That's all I need to say. I don't need to understand what intersect does or what within does or what not does. Or what strong does very simple to implement very easy for the tool to process okay so um, have a look at where you found this video if you search in, in google for things like uh, system verilog within construct or on the cadence support site then you'll find uh, videos related to other constructs as well so thanks for your time and goodbye